guys, uh, we're going live here. We've got Ammon Bundy on the phone, and he is live from um, he's live from solitary confinement after being beat up and uh, traumatized all night. And uh, this is at the CCA for-profit prison in uh, Pahrump, Nevada. And so I'm going to turn it over to. Um, Ammon, if you guys can hear him, please let me know. It's a little bit uh, of a difficult situation here, but we're going to do the best that we can. Ammon, go ahead and say hi. Oh, um, anyway, I just, I just wanted everybody to, I don't know, maybe understand a little bit the situation. I, I don't, I want and tell us what you this call is from an inmate facility. Uh, the main thing I want you to believe my wife. I don't want people calling her a liar. We, we believe her, Ammon. Tell us what I know. Tell us what you have been through. She said that there were moments that you actually had circulation being cut off, and you thought that they were going to kill you. Well, what happened? They so. They didn't like that I had a shirt hung over my my bunk bed, I guess. And so the guy took it and that's fine and dandy, but the problem is is if you don't have your shirt they won't then you then you can't get breakfast the next morning because they won't let you eat unless you have a shirt. Okay. And I my my other my other two shirts were in the laundry, so anyway, I tried to get it back and he refused, and then Ryan got involved, and he tried to get it back. And anyway, then they decided to use force on us and drug Ryan out in the hallway. Or actually, they they said that they wanted to talk to Ryan out in the hallway, and so he went out there willingly and talked to him. And I told him that I wanted to keep a, an eye on him because I was afraid of what they might do to him. And they said all they wanted to do is talk to him. That's all they said. Anyway, he talked out there for a while, and the next thing you know, they're hauling him down the hallway. And then they came in, and I demanded to know what they were going to do with Ryan, and they wouldn't tell me. And the other people in the pod were upset because they saw how the guy lied and told told them that we had assaulted him, the the guard, mm -hmm. you know. And they were upset, so the pod was upset, and they wanted to, me to get out of the end of the hallway so they could do what they want to do with me without worrying about the other inmates. And so they grabbed me and drug me out and beat me to the ground and need me, you know, and hit me and shoved their fingers in my ears and behind my ears. And anyway. Can you tell us handcuffed the me and Can you tell us the names of any of the guards who were assaulting you? No, and I... I don't want to quite go there yet, Kelly. I, okay. I know maybe I should, but I, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to be. Re I don't want to retaliate. I know. That's fine. I'm just out. I just. I, they, they need accountability, but I don't know. Maybe I have more faith in people saying what was wrong. It's all business. The tyrants. They are. They don't recognize themselves. Just justify it all. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even get it. I, I can't think that way. And okay, so they. I don't get it. They took you. Then they took you into a sh they, shower stall. They drug me down, yeah, and they took me down into. This call is from an inmate facility. Threw me in a shower. It's about a. It is a. It's a probably a about a three by three uh, block yeah. brick shower. It has a metal door on the back side of it. And I'm handcuffed and they did take my leg irons off, but they my leg irons had cut me, cut cut around my ankles and both both my legs, so they were bleeding. Your ankles were bleeding. And 
Yeah, and both of them because of the trip down the long hallway with the big irons on. And then I'm handcuffed behind my back. I got my my arms turned my arms turned out, you know, so that really bad position. And then with that little room, I I couldn't. Just crunch up, and I could never get any comfortable. I could stand up, but after a couple hours of that, I'd have to go back. Then I was hurting my my shoulders. And you were, you were handcuffed weight. this whole time. Yeah, behind my back, and it was, it was they were tight, and their my hands were starting to swell up. And, Cutting circulation off my hands, having to move my hands to keep circulation in my hands, and how and long? How my long were you right in shoulder. I was in there for 13 hours, and they were telling me that I was going to be in there for 72 hours. But I think the reason why they abandoned that was because Ryan was calling. He could see a little bit of the shower from his cell, mm -hmm. so he was calling her. Trying to, I think you know, I think that's what brought a lot of tension. And this call was, is from an inmate facility. Mentioned one time that they, that Nye County was going to come and investigate, and I think that's what. I don't know who said that, but whoever said that was wise in saying that because they began to act different once. But once they that didn't. They didn't actually come and investigate. I've never seen them or talked to them. No, I still would like to. I'd like to tell them what, what's going on. You I'd like to show them my hands and you, stuff. You, you want to speak to the sheriff? Either that or the commissioners. Okay. They have a responsibility to protect the people's rights in this county. Yeah, they do. And just because this facility has a federal contract, it doesn't negate their responsibility to no. protect the people that are within the boundaries of their county. No, the contract does not give what's them happening here. the contract does not give them the right to abuse anybody. No contract gives somebody the right the right to treat people the way that they are treating you and many other prisoners. What you're experiencing, you are bringing light to what many other people across this country are going through, Ammon. And I commend you for being bold yeah. enough to share your story so that people can get involved and people can tell their neighbors what's going on and how we need to get to the jails and and set these people free, all of them. If, these, if you guys are not going to receive due process, then there's no reason for you to be sitting in these jail cells just to be tortured and abused. This isn't America. Uh, this isn't how we do things. Uh, well, the, what they wanted from me is they, they wanted nothing but but to, for me to submit. They wanted my spirit. They wanted to tear They want. That's all they want. Yeah. And so I spent... Because they're like, well, we'll take your handcuffs off if you'll just, if you'll just uh, strip and and. Uh, this call is from an inmate facility. And do what we tell you to. And that's all they want, Kelly. I know. And it's no different than, I mean, I don't know, you know, but it seems no different to me than any other torture. I mean, when. When we think about tortures and torture chambers, they drag you in and they throw you in there and then they they inflict physical pain on you to get you to, you know, do what they want you to do or admit to something that they want you to admit or, or deny something that they want you to deny, but it's all through force and that's what I just experienced. And you, you are absolutely, anyway, they, you're absolutely a prisoner of war, Ammon. That's... There's, there's no other way around it. You are a prisoner of war. Well, it got, it got pretty, I don't know, I was quite a bit of pain, you know, in there, and, and I, I couldn't sleep I, because I'd been up, you know, the day and then all through the night, about 30 hours, almost 30 hours, I think, yeah, it was probably right around 30 hours since I, I had been able to, you know, I was in there without sleep, and then I, I had to, you know, I had to go to the bathroom, and 
there's no place. So I just put that in the drain, but then I, you know, that was difficult. Right there in the three foot by three foot shower that they left you in for 13 hours is where you also had used the bathroom. Oh well, yeah, there's no other choice. I mean, I had to go to the bathroom twice, and and then I didn't want to use. I was there's no water, and of course they don't feed you, but. There's a shower there, but the problem is, is if I turned the shower on, it's too small. I would have got wet, and I was already, the temperature is already at the point, and probably because of, you know, the shock of my body and stuff, I was already shivering and shaking. And I didn't want to get wet because I felt that I would be really cold then. And anyway, so... And then they, they kept telling me that if, they don't, if I don't submit, that they're going to escalate the force on me. And I just kept telling them that, look, they don't have a right to do what they're doing. And they can't, you know, they don't have a right to torture me just because they are not willing to give them what they want. And so anyway, then, so at probably around... Well, close to noon or something today, I think they came in with like a SWAT team. They're fully geared up, like riot gear. I've never seen never seen it in here before like that. And they, you know, they opened the door and they drug me out. And I, at that point, I could, you know, just I was just I was still in my handcuffs and I. It was hard to get up and walk, but they they weren't too mean to me. They, I mean, they weren't. They, you know, they did help me up and walk me over to my cell and to the to the hole and they took me in there. Maybe lay face on my ground while they several of them were on my back and then they un handcuffed me and I could barely move my arms. So they had to move my arms for me to put my, because they said as soon as they unhandcuffed me that I was supposed to put my arms on my head, but I couldn't do it because because of the position I was in for so long and because of the circulation of my arms and and still anyway it's still difficult to move my arms. So they had to put they used their hands to put to grab my arms and put my hands on my head. And then they stripped me all the way down to nothing, rolled me over, did their inspection, threw the clothes out the door, backed out, and shut the door, and left me naked in the cell. And that's where you are right now? Well, the guard that looks over the, looks over the, the hole here, he got my garments, my undergarments, and he threw them back through the latch, and so I, I was able to put those on, okay. and that's where I'm at right now. And how long do they plan to leave you in the hole until we come and get you out? I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, the thing is, is we have, we have to understand that in their eyes, this is all my fault. And you know, I, I mean, I don't know. It's not your fault, Anna. I could be, I could be a good, I, I just, this I'm just not a good, from an inmate facility. I'm just not a good prisoner. You're not, a good, not a good prisoner. You're not a good slave. I know, but. That's all. This isn't your fault. If I would just comply and accept, I could probably be a lot easier in here, but I don't know. If you, if you comply and accept, then that's what we are. You have one minute remaining. Then that's what we are to do out here as well. Um, and what, um. Uh, there's a group of us that will get together and we'll fly down to Nevada and we'll be there by this weekend and we'll bring as many elected officials as we can and we will make sure that you have a meeting with either commissioners or the sheriff. So you can mark my words. I'm telling uh, you. We, we, will, we will come. Okay? We'll come. John will come. I really, I really believe not for my sake but for the sake of what's come, what might happen to somebody else. They intended on leaving me in there for 72 hours and it would have been, it would almost have killed me. I'm certain of it. 13 hours was enough. 
Well, you have 400, no. 500 listeners right now. Do you think they'll let you call back in? Your time is up. That was Ammon Bundy from CCA, Harump, Nevada Detention Center, uh, ho hostage center. Um, where he uh, had a, a shirt hanging off of the edge of his bed last night, so they drug him out at 10 p.m. and um, threw him in a three-foot-by-three-foot three room shower um, for 13 hours with no food and water. And after that, uh, he was stripped naked and thrown into solitary confinement with no clothes. And it was one guard who came and brought him back his garments. America, wake up! This is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wake up. We need people. We need funds going to the attorneys. AmmonBundyDefense.com. 500 viewers right now. Each of you go and, and donate $5 right now so that we can get Ammon's attorney, who is not in Nevada, Morgan Philpot, down there to Nevada to be fighting for him. He should already be in Nevada, and the only reason he's not in Nevada is because of funds, because he doesn't financially have the means to be there staying for the next year fighting this battle for Ammon. So he's left dependent on Dan Hill, his court-appointed attorney, who obviously has not intervened and done anything in this situation. We, the people, stepped up and made phone calls to the jail. That is why he was taken out of the hole after 13 hours, when they were going to leave him there for 72 hours. Did you guys hear his voice? It didn't even sound like Ammon Bundy. Can you imagine what his family is going through knowing how he's suffering? We have to do more. No more rallies. We have to have protests. We have to have, we need to be flooding online media. We need to be contacting all of the elected officials. Everybody needs to be calling the Nye County Sheriff Department and demanding that he go in there and speak to Ammon Bundy. Demanding. He needs to call. He needs to go do a well check on Ammon Bundy. His, his ankles were cut from the shackles that they drug him down the hall and down the stairs with. He was handcuffed for 13 hours with his hands behind his back in a three foot by three foot shower and then thrown naked into solitary confinement. If this is not the time for the people to rise up and say, absolutely not, not on my watch, then when is the time? These men have been convicted of no crimes. They will be acquitted. He will be acquitted in his trial. I absolutely guarantee that. So now this man will have suffered along with the others who have stood strong, like Ryan Bundy, who says, I will not comply with unlawful orders. That's very un-American of anybody to com comply with unlawful orders. If it's a bad law, you don't comply with it. He had every right to keep his garments in there with him and not have them taken out of his room last night. They're bullying him. They're not complying with unlawful orders. That is what a proud American does. That's not what a terrorist does. Ammon Bundy and Ryan Bundy will submit to lawful orders. This is not law. This is abuse. This is a human warehouse. This facility is making money off abusing these people. Tax-paying dollars, federal dollars, are going to this facility so that they can do exactly what they just did to Ammon Bundy. 13 hours in a cell, in a shower with his hands behind his back. And when people called the sheriff, you know what he said this morning? It's a private facility. You have to contact the marshals. We've contacted the marshals. They don't care. You can't call one of their own who put Ammon in there and complain to them about the treatment. They don't care. This might as well be a concentration camp where if somebody crossed the line because of their nationality or their religious beliefs or the war that we were in the middle of, whatever reason, they're thrown into this camp and they're disposed of like they're an animal. That's what we're in right now, you guys. This is not America. This is not America that we wave our flag supposedly representing. We're not there anymore. We need funds for the attorneys. We need people on the ground protesting. We need a group of people going down to that jail tomorrow morning and not standing outside but marching all the way up to the doors, ringing the bell and saying, I'm here to see the warden. I would like to know when Ammon Bundy will be taken out of solitary confinement. And I would like to know when he will be reimbursed for the abuse that you were paid for to put on him in that hole. That's what we want to know. We need to be going up to the doors. If we need to fly into town, let's get there. Okay, I'll get there, John will get there, we'll go down there, we'll go up to the gate, march in and say, we, we are here to speak to the warden and we're not leaving until we speak to the warden.
we've got to do more, you guys. We've got to do more. We cannot forget these people. We have to do more. I don't know if he's going to be able to call back. I think he should have already called back. So I'm going to end this because this is this is his family's live stream. So their page. Remember Ammon Bundy. AmonBundyDefense.com. Go and support that. And also call the CCA, um, uh, Southern Nevada Detention Center slash Hostage Center. And um, tell them tomorrow. Sorry, it's .com. Do I keep saying .org? Thank you, William. It's .com. And tell them tomorrow that you don't approve of the treatment that they're giving, um, that, that they as a jail, even if they're private, they should be making sure they are not holding people unconstitutionally because otherwise they become a hostage facility. So before they check people in, they should be asking the wardens, they should be asking the, the marshals, is this person being denied bail? And if the answer is yes, it needs to be, why is he being denied bail? We can't take him in here if he's being unconstitutionally denied bail because then we are basically involved now in your conspiracy to abuse the American people and we can't get paid to be a part of a conspiracy and abuse the American people. So if you're going to deny him bail, we have to know why first and we have to approve that reason, right? Capital offenses, they have to be a true threat to society killing people. This facility is saying it's not our business why they were denied bail, we're just holding him here. What a wonderful baseball bat for the government to have a facility with, with guards and handcuffs and uh, guns that won't even ask the question, who am I holding? They should be asking the question, who am I holding? Why am I holding them here? Why is that not the obligation of the government or the prosecution or the marshals to prove that the people they are sending to this facility truly belong in this facility and that no laws are being broken and that this isn't some political agenda where they're using this facility to beat people up. That's exactly what they're doing. Call them tomorrow and tell them that we don't, as the American people, don't approve of what they're doing and we're going to come down there and start camping out on their doorstep. So if they don't want to have to deal with a whole bunch of us, then they better figure out how to deal with Ammon Bundy because we the people are sick and tired of hearing about good Americans being abused for profit. CCA, for-profit prison. By the way, Donald Trump has lots of funds and stocks in for-profit pri prisons. So why don't we get a hold of Donald Trump also and uh, let him know what's going on in these for-profit prisons and ask him if he'll go ahead and pull his stock out of them because making money on a human warehouse is just un-American. That's all. God bless you guys. Thanks for calling today. It definitely helped. AmonBundyDefense.com and pray for his family and uh, also for him because you could hear it in his voice that this man is broken. And uh, he needs the American people to be out standing in front of that jail uh, fighting for him. So thanks, guys. God bless.